Hi, my name is James Floyd. I'm an Extension Associate. I'm stationed out of the Raymond office at Central Mississippi Research and Extension Center. And um, I'm a Forestry Associate for the Southwest District. Chapter one, the management plan, that's no mistake. Without the management plan, you can't really do any of these other civicultural practices without consulting with somebody and seeing how, how they feel about them. You've got to have that management plan. That management plan is your game plan. It's your plan of action. All right? It's your map. I'm going to refer to this management plan as a map several times in this conversation. It's going to take you from where your forest is now to the desired forest that you're trying to achieve. All right? So it's that map. It's that directional advice. Okay? Without a management plan, you're lost. Without a management plan, what do I mean by you're lost? What I mean is by uh, without that management plan, you don't know how to get there. You don't have that direction of how to get to um, that desired forest. Now, for some of us, we're a little bit more lost than others, okay? And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that is... I'm not talking about if you know somebody who's a forester or if you know somebody who's a logger. Um, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about where you're trying to go with your management plan. What are you trying to achieve? What are you achieving now out of those forest, out of the out of your forest? Okay? So you gotta know where you're going. And then that management plan again is gonna be that map to get you there. Okay? All right. And what I'm talking about, where you're going with your forest, that's your management goals. That's your management objectives. What am I trying to achieve out of my, out of my forest? Am I trying to grow big deer? Am I trying to get as many turkey on my property as I can? Maybe I'm trying to produce the most income out of my timber as possible. You know, all these are sound objectives. All these are good goals, okay? But you also got to prioritize these goals, okay? I may like to hunt turkey, I want to have as many turkey as I can on my property, but I know that, that timber is going to pay for my turkey hunting. So my timber is going to be maybe a step above that in my management objectives. So I've got a number of objectives and I've got them prioritized. Okay? Now, if you're having trouble with that, you say, I do so much on my property, James, I don't know really how to go about, you know, picking out my objectives and uh, I don't know how, about, how to go about prioritizing those objectives in an order of importance to me or um, in fact if you own the property as an LLC or if there's several owners you have to get together you have to decide what are our primary objectives what are our objectives and put them in a hierarchy and there are publications that uh, are out there that'll help you do this this is one of those publications you may have to pause this on your slideshow during the video to see this uh, see this page better or ask us to uh, to get you this and you just go through and you number what you like to do on your property in an order of preference then you can go down the rows go down the columns and sum them up and that'll help you decide which are my more important objectives what are my objectives all right so now we've got our objectives down we've got them prioritized and for most of you, producing a timber sale or income off of, my, uh, off of my forest land is going to be on my objectives. It's very important that um, you're not just uh, interested in the most I can make out of my property with this objective, that you're going to take care of that property, and that you're going to produce a quality timber product. Okay? So you take that objective of I'm trying to maximize the amount that I can make out of my timber stand and you're going to change that a little bit if that's one of your primary objectives to I want to produce a quality product because the better quality my product is the more I can market it and the most I'm going to make out of that timber stand the better it's going to achieve that objective. When you're marketing your timber you've got to think of how do I market that timber? What are my timber products that I'm growing right now? Okay, If you're growing pine you're primarily interested in the pulpwood, chip and saw, and saw logs, okay? And realize where your income is, okay? Realize where my money is. And keep these, uh, keep these in mind when you're going through and doing these civicultural practices 
like, uh, like thinning, for instance, or anything that's going to maybe cost you a little bit of money to do. Know that I'm improving the quality of this product, and that's going to help me maximize my objective of making money off of my stand. Okay? So just know your products if that's one of your objectives. Okay? So civicultural practices and getting that quality product, if that's one of my primary objectives and for most landowners in my area, it is. I want to you know, produce a revenue off my product, uh, off my property, I want to produce a quality product. So I'm going to go about um, how do I do that? Well, first of all, if you're planting seedlings, you can take advantage of genetically improved stocks. And then you have the civicultural practices that are going to be inside that management plan. And that management plan is going to have the guidelines, they're going to tell you where and uh, what practices are needed um, in order to improve that quality of my product. So management is really what we're focusing on when we're talking about that management plan. Got to have a management plan before you have management. Okay? A management plan is, again, it's driven by your objectives. Okay? As a landowner, I've now got my objectives picked out. I've got them prioritized. This management plan is, again, it's that map, how to achieve my objectives. How do I get to my desired forest? Uh, it's made to be flexible. Okay, we know that things in life change. I may come on a, a circumstance where, well, I, this was an unforeseen circumstance and I need the funds and that's what my timber is there for. Um, I just need them a little bit sooner than later. Okay, so this management plan is made to be flexible. Okay. Uh, it includes an activity schedule. So management plan is usually good anywhere from 10, 15 years, and you're gonna have that activity schedule that's gonna go through, um, you know, uh, this year I'm gonna do this, maybe every year I need to do something, and uh, you're gonna look at that activity schedule from year to year, okay? It qualifies you for the tree farm program, and I'm gonna go over these a little bit later. Plan criteria, what must a plan have? Okay, it describes the current and desired forest. Again, it's that map. It's how to get you from the forest that you are now to the forest that's achieving your management objectives to the, uh, to the max, okay? It includes practices and activities aimed at reaching those desired conditions. Again, how do you get there? And it documents the feasibility and strategy, again, you're going to have to keep records. With this management plan, that's just one thing in your file, but it should be one of the most important things in your file. Always keep uh, you know, scale tickets, volume removed, keep receipts. Anything that you do to that property, the more you can build up that management plan. Again, it's taking you from where your forest at to where you want to be. Okay? And you have a couple steps of action. You have a couple things that you have to go through in order to get you there. All right. The first thing that you're going to do with this management plan is the management plan is written by a forester. So you have your forest, you say it's not achieving my objectives, um, I've got to get some help. I've got to have a professional, uh, professional opinion, I've got to have a, some professional advice. So you're going to seek a forester, you're going to get that registered forester, and then his contact information will always be on that management plan. So even if somebody else comes into owning that property, let's say um, you know, a son, a daughter, or something like that, they will have that contact for that forester. And even if that forester is no longer there, they'll have a contact that may, um, if it's with an office or a district, Forestry Commission, U.S. Forest Service, something like that, it'll be able to uh, get them in contact with a forester, okay? So have your plan in writing, have that forester write this plan down because if it's in writing you're more apt to keep up with it. I know a lot of very beautiful timber stands that are managed by people who don't have a management plan they just have it in their head but again it's more important to have it in writing. Again that next generation if you're handing that property down to another landowner they're going to know the steps that it's going to take in order to achieve those objectives that you're trying to achieve Okay, it's going to be their uh, contact to a forester. All right, uh, review the plan regularly every uh, five to ten years. Like I say, management plan is usually good about ten to fifteen. Uh, be 
be, be sure to include measurements that uh, protect soil and water quality and uh, most importantly, you have to implement it. I'll go through each one of these a little bit further detail. So again, seek that registered forester for your help. Uh, if you have a larger property, I uh, really recommend a, a board of registered foresters, a private consultant. There are a lot of consultants out there. Uh, you can go on board of registered foresters website and you can look at the consultants that work in your county and live in your county. Don't just look at your county, look at counties around and look at what consultants are available and what charge for a fee. You can go through the Mississippi Forestry Commission and you can use uh, MSU Extension Service and uh, we can get you started to where you need to be for a management plan. Uh, Mississippi Forestry Commission can write you a, uh, a stewardship plan. I'll go over what a stewardship plan is a little later. But if you have a larger forest or maybe one that's more complex, I really recommend a private consultant. Get on the board of registered foresters website. Okay, so step two, have that plan in writing. You're more likely to follow that advice. Future landowners know your goals. They have guidance and they have that contact. Okay, you've got to have records of um, your maintenance, your civil cultural practices on your property. And this management plan is going to be the first thing when you open your file of records. Okay, regularly review the plan. Okay, again, this plan is made to be flexible. Something may change in the family, something may change in the stand. So we've got to review that uh, management plan regularly. Again, it's going to have um, it's going to have that activity schedule. So know what you're supposed to be doing within certain times. Again, it's going to be a little bit flexible. Okay, objectives change. Maybe it's with landowners. Like I said, maybe uh, the finances uh, were available, now they're not, so I got to do different things. So objectives change. Look over this management plan and see how that management plan is going to change with that. Protect water and soil resources. All right. So you've got to really, once you've looked at that plan, it's going to have things in that plan. Even a basic plan is going to have things in it to protect soil and water quality. You got to get out there and look at your property and make sure that uh, if you have any type of harvest activity, go back and make sure that these are implemented according to that plan. If you have a forester you've hired, you know, again, he's going to stay on top of it. See your property regularly or educate the people that do see your property. A lot of times when I give talks, um, they'll say, well, James, my property's in another county. Maybe my property's in another state. I don't get there all that much. So how do I check for things like forced health? How do I check for soil and water quality issues? How do I check for erosion? Um, I say educate the people that do see your property. If you've got a family member that maybe lives close by to that property or somebody who's hunting on that property, perfect, uh, in fact, like a hunting camp, um, if you lease that property, educate those folks. Tell them if you see a group of dead trees, let me know about it. That's something I want to know about. If you see erosion, let me know about it. That's something I want to know about. So if you're not able to see your property, edu educate the people that do see your property so they know when to inform you of different things. Again, that management plan is going to let you know what you need to be informed of. Okay. A plan is only as good as the action you take. So when you're looking at your activity schedule, again, it's going to be a little bit flexible, but you've got to take action. You can't just look at it and say, well, in year 2014, it said I need a thinning, um, but prices are pretty low right now, so I'm going to put it off about four years. No, you've got to put those things into action. Like I said, you had professional help to get you that management plan. He wrote those things down in that timeline. So you've got to act on those things. Okay. For example, I'll use thinning as a, as an example. If you thin too soon, you, uh, you create poor wood quality. You increase the amount of juvenile wood and number of size and live limbs. If you wait too late, you increase your entire rotation length and you increase the stress on that stand. It makes it more susceptible to bark beetle attacks. All right. So there's a little flexibility built in, but you know, keep in mind, don't get far off that activity schedule. If it says you need to do something at this time, you know, be in contact with that forester. Let them know, you know, I know I've got a little leeway, but I want to know exactly what that is. Don't prolong it. Okay. 
a management plan template. Um, uh, this is kind of what I was alluding to when I said the Forestry Commission can write you a management plan. Uh, there are templates out there to where all you have to do is go through and just kind of fill in the blanks, so to speak. The more active a, management, a landowner is on that management plan when it's written, the better it's going to achieve your objectives. You know, I can't stress this enough. A management plan is only written maybe 10 or 15 years. Really be in contact with that forester who's writing that management plan while he's writing it so he really understands your goals and objectives once you've chosen those goals and objectives and once you've got them prioritized in order. You know, during the, uh, the writing of that management plan, that's critical. Okay, this is what I was talking about with the template. You can go through the template and in the gray areas, you see them highlighted, for example, on this page, it's landowner name, uh, name of county, name of state. You can go through this template, a forester can go through this template, and he can get you a basic management plan. Uh, this is a basic management plan that will qualify you for several different programs, and I'll go over those programs a little bit later. But again, this is just basic, um, and it can go from there. Like I said, a management plan is just that one first thing in your file. Keep good records. All right, you're going to manage on a stand level. So we have our management plan. How's it going to be broken down? It's going to be broken down as a stand level. Your property may not only include forested areas, it may also include pastures, maybe row crop agricultural, maybe water, okay? Your property is probably very diverse if you have a larger property especially. Um, but how is a forest management plan broken down? It's broken down into stands. Now stands can be described in different ways. Most commonly, they're referred to as age classes, and species composition. But you can also use soil type, hydrology, topographic, and many other things to break down uh, in your management plan what a stand is. You know, maybe you have a special area that you're gonna manage a little bit differently than every, everywhere else. Well, that's gonna be its own stand, and it's gonna break it down in that management plan, describe it, you know, what it is now, and what do I have to do to that stand, and when, to achieve my objectives out of that stand. So we're managing on a stand level, okay? And this is gonna be an example of what you're gonna see in that management plan, because the management plan has to have at least two maps. One of those maps is gonna show uh, where your stands lie on your property. And uh, it's gonna have them outlined and it's gonna have them labeled. And you can label those stands and identify those stands you know, using the methods that I just described. In this one, you can see uh, PP and a year, planted pine and the year it was planted to identify the stand. So we know the species and we know the year that it was planted. So in my activity schedule, when I refer to PP 99, I know that's planted pine 1999, all right? So I've got my stands identified. I've got the map that identifies these stands. So I know where they are. Everybody's on the same page. If you have a civic cultural practice, if you have you know, any type of logging work or you have a forester come in and do work, you can look at that map together and you know exactly what stands need what. Okay? Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things that can identify a stand. Biological diversity, range, aesthetic quality, recreation. Maybe you like to just have this area for driving four-wheelers or um, you know, especially timber divides the stand. Uh, fish and wildlife uses, cost share areas. Maybe this particular stand is CRP. So I've got certain guidelines on how I can manage this particular stand. Uh, threatened endangered species. This may be my stand of red cockaded woodpeckers. So I'm kind of limited to what I can do in that stand. Uh, forest health. You may have a bug spot. You know, this is a stand that needs monitoring every year kind of thing. Um, archaeological, cultural, history, historical sites. Maybe you got a little graveyard, so that's going to be an area that's going to be separate. Wetlands, um, you know, use of fire, carbon cycle. You know, all these things can be used to describe and uh, differentiate a stand. All right, so we know that we're managing on the stand level. Each stand is going to have its own description. Now, you can combine stands. If you looked in the maps that I was showing earlier, you had uh, two areas that were planted pine in the same year. 
we're going to manage those the you know the same way any activity we have on one most likely we're going to have on another unless there's an insect or something like that that would come into one that wouldn't come into the other all right so you're going to have the description of the stand again um, the slide you're seeing it goes back to that template that we created if you're using a private consultant he may use a little bit something that look a little bit different a different template he may have his own style but uh, basically um, you're going to have a stand description or stand name. You're going to have the acreage. You're going to have the age of that stand. Um, you know, if you planted the stand, it's pretty cut and dry what that age is. But um, you can still get, uh, get ages off of even unplanted areas. You can look at when was the last time it was clear cut and, you know, natural regenerated. Um, you look at the general size and you have that forester do some measurements. So he's going to get out there, he may do an inventory on these stands, and that's going to add even further information. He may have some volume that he can put in these stand descriptions, and that's great. But uh, basically, you're going to have the age, species, and uh, size of the stand, so how many acres you have. But it can go in further detail. Okay. And this is that activity schedule that I was talking about. And it's not real complex, it's pretty cut and dry. You have the year in which an activity occurs, and you have the stand in which it occurs. For example, for example, let's say you have different age classes, but everything on your property is pine. Well, every year you kind of do some um, health checks. You need to monitor for pine beetle activity. You know, that's where something understands. You would have all under a year. You would have the life of the management plan. Most management plans are going to last about 10, 15 years. So you're gonna have the life of the management plan and all stands, that's okay, because that's something you need to do annually. Also, monitor for um, erosion, you know, soil and uh, water quality stuff. That's stuff you need to do every year. Monitor for invasive species, that's something you need to do every year. If you can't see your property, again, educate the people that do see your property. If it's a hunting camp or organization or family, educate those people on what's out there and what they need to be looking for. What do I got in my plan, okay? Um, again, if you have a forester, have a local forester that's close to a property that, um, you know, maybe he can check on it for you, okay? Uh, again, this is, this is the activity schedule and kind of what it looks like. You can pause on this screen if you need to look at it further. These are just examples of things. Again, this stand is going to be very individualized to you or the management plan is, activity schedule. All right. I told you that um, a good management plan is going to have at least two maps. One's going to tell you where the stands are. Um, this is another one that's commonly included in management plans. And it's just going to show you where your property lies as far as a landscape scale. You know, it's going to have the legal description probably, section, township, and range, or description of that property. So it's just going to show you where your property is in a, in a landscape scale. How close is it to an interstate kind of thing. Plan criteria, again, it's going to list out those activities and you're going to have that activity sheet to, to go through what you need to do and when. The life of a management plan is going to be around 10 years. For the template that we're showing you that I got several slides of, that's a 10-year management plan. Okay, again, a management plan should be flexible. A lot can change in that 10 years. Um, forests are not static. We know that uh, ch unforeseen changes can happen, such as hurricanes, tornadoes, straight line winds, flooding. All of these things can happen that we don't take into account, that we're not going to take into account when planning out our long-term objectives of our forest. Okay, so these things can happen. Our management plan has to be flexible. That's why having that forester contact is important um, if you get into trouble. Also, uh, like I say, you know, hand, the property hands can change, different owners come in with different objectives, and so they're going to have that contact and they're going to have that game plan, they're going to have that map on how to achieve their objectives. Uh, a lot of people have told me, James, I like my forest the way it is, it really doesn't need to change, I don't really need to do anything to it, and that's not true. If you don't do anything, you know, that can sometimes be your strongest action because that stand will change. You know, nature will change over time. The species that you have now may not be the species that you have in 50 years. So yes, there are activities just to keep your stand looking the same 
and uh, achieving those objectives. So you got to have that, even that in there. All right. A management plan is going to qualify you. What, what benefits do I have? It qualifies you for tree farm program. You can get one of those real pretty tree farm signs and uh, that'll qualify you for SFI, which is Sustainable Forestry Initiative. All right. Places to contact. You say, all right, James, you, you've got me convinced I'm sold. I know I need a management plan to manage my timber. Who do I contact? Where do I go to? Where do I ask questions? Well, you can always come to Mississippi State Extension Service and ask us. Also, you have the U, uh, Mississippi Forestry Commission, the U.S. Forest Service, uh, Mississippi Forestry Association. All these are great, great organizations as far as knowing a good forester. Word of mouth is the best advertisement for a forester. So become active in these organizations and ask questions. Um, you know, chances are good that your county has a forestry association. Some forestry associations are a little bit more active than others. But you can contact us at the uh, extension. Contact your extension forester and he can put you in contact with maybe a county agent or somebody who's over your local county CFA, County Forestry Association, which is um, kind of sheltered or branched by Mississippi Forestry Association. All right. Like I said, they're going to put you in some good contacts so you can get on that game plan, you get on that map, and you figure out what the objectives are that I'm trying to achieve and what's the direction I'm trying to head in with my forest. All right, and with that, I really appreciate you having me here today to talk about the management plan, Chapter 1.